Hello everyone, that's us back again after our break. Hope you didn't miss us too much. I'm just going to update the stream title to... Uh, we're revisiting... Bloodbones. There we go. Revisiting Bloodbones. If I remember rightly, there's lots of voices for me to do here. There is, yeah. Pirate voices. Okay, okay. Uh, should we say we call the stream at half past nine? Yeah. An that's... hour of blood bone. See how far we get. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan to me. Um, cool. I just wanted to remind everyone as well that's watching. Um, if you ever feel like you want to try doing a Twitch stream for yourself, um, just let us know. Um, either on the Dark Discord or by messaging one of the committee. Um, and we can get you set up for it. It's really good fun. Um, I mean, we've been doing it for how many months now? It's good. I mean, we can pretty much tell by the books, right? We've done. So we've done four books, plus Black Bones, which is the free one. Um, so I think it's four months. So we do a big month. No. No. So we longer. Two months worth of Death Trap Dungeon. Uh, I think we had to pause Little Lizard King as well and come back to it. That's right. And same with the Warlock fight up Madame Game Park at the Maze. Uh, we, we kind of speed ran through the Snow Witch and got right to the boss at the end very quickly without any preparation for it. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, she's a vampire and... Do you have anything to combat vampires? No? Okay, you lose. <laughs> so yeah, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months? Yeah, because we were streaming during the summer, weren't we? Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah. Um, but yeah, do, do feel free to, if you've got ideas of things you'd like to do, uh, we've had art streams, we've had character building screen streams, dungeon building ones. Um, oh, that was a fun one. Yeah. Um, and if you want to go and watch any of those streams, they're over on our YouTube channel. Uh, which I definitely know the name of, it's derps underscore YouTube. <laughs> It's, oh, actually, it might just be Dundee University Role Playing Society. Uh, have you got it on? <laughs> plug, plug. Um, yeah, um, I think. Oh, a uh, message from Walter Rivers in chat saying, appreciate the invitation, but I don't belong to the Dundee University Role Play Society and I don't even belong to Scotland. Oh, bless. Well, wow. I'm glad you've been joining, uh, joining us anyway. Um, I hope you're having fun. Um, should we launch loved ones? Yeah. Well, let's, let's do some pirates. Pirates. Okie dokie. Um, so, we'll be playing as an adventurer. Um, as per usual. Mm -hmm. Alright, time for our starting stamina. Oh. Uh, below average. But it's the skill that matters. Yeah, the skill's where it's at. As I always say, I'd rather have high skill, low stam. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've rolled very low here. No, it's okay. That's alright. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can work with that. And our luck. Ooh. Okay. We're quite lucky for Slightly. Ones. That, that will go down. So we're, we're kind of like an average Joe. It's the next step. Oh. Oh, gold as well. Yep. It's a blood bone specific feature. So we roll two dice and add 12. Oh. <laughs> oh, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, 16 doubloons. Um, time to prepare our equipment. Uh, so we get a sword, a backpack, a tinderbox, and a lantern. Uh, we've also got rations, which can... Do we? Be, uh, oh. No, oh, we in Bloodbones you begin with no provisions. Ah, there we go. But we do get rum at some point, don't we? <laughs> If we're lucky. <laughs> um, oh, the other thing we've got to do is pick our portrait and our name. Yeah. So Heidi Oriano, retired. She lives. <laughs> lives a nice, happy life, surrounded by gold, and doesn't ever have to go inside a mountain again. Yeah, she's got a nice, nice, happy life. <laughs> Um, so, has anyone got any suggestions for names? Um, I'll let you have a pick. Uh, have a think of that while we scroll through the portrait options. Yeah. Okay, so we're not like super tough guy. She's okay? Mm hmm. Hmm. Have we had him before? That's not old worm food, is it? Oh, I think it is. Yeah, we, we can't be old worm food <laughs> again. As great as he was. Yennefer. Yeah. <laughs> um... Oh, I like this guy. Yeah, this guy's kind of got, like, cool. cat face. I like the hair as well. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to that one. Gremlin y dude. Oh no, this was this was the old worm food. Yeah, that's right. Because there's another portrait of him without the scar. Right? <laughs> yes, it's that's worm right. Food <laughs> Forgot about worm food, worm food junior. <laughs> old worm food junior, you can't uh, can't forget about worm food junior. We've been in this one before, right? At the beginning. That was our original, yeah. Um, we've not been this person, though. They, they look a bit too. Um... Beardy. Yeah. Not average enough. Yeah, he's like pretty average. Yeah. They look like they could be a good sneaky uh -huh. character. I was going to say, he looks like he asks if I get to the Cloud District often. <laughs> He's very piratey, this guy. Yeah. That was a good one. She looks too happy yeah. for Pirate Town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was the guy that we were before in Blood Bones. That's right. Oh, a monk. <laughs> just, just... <laughs> that that style's back in, I'll have you know. Oh, I. How about this one? Yeah, that one's pretty fun. Let's go for this one. Uh, we right. have no sessions for names, I'm afraid. Yeah. So we're just gonna have to... Let's see. Yeah, having a, having a look around trying to find some inspiration. I'm like, do I grab a random magic card and go based on the name of the the artist? Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Right, what have we got? Oh, we've got uh, a random card. Or oh, we have a suggestion. Bolty McBoatface. That that's what the internet would always <laughs> suggest. When in doubt, maybe, maybe we can merge it with a magic card. Okay, so something he look something face, right? Grabbing a random magic card. Okay, we have Dragon Mage, and the art is by Matthew D. Wilson. Okay. Um. Have Matty McMatface 
although I'm not sure. Hmm. Never ask the internet anything. That's a good point. <laughs> and yet here we are. Asking the internet to help us make great decisions on our adventuring choices. Uh, this one is drawn by Cynthia Shepard. That is a much better name. Oh, I like that name. <laughs> Probably go with Cynthia, because Shepard just brings back uh, Mass Effect memories for me. Yeah, that's fair. Cynthia is. Nice. Okay, so, um... Ready our equipment? Yeah. Let's go! During the adventure you will notice that hours will pass at key points, usually when you've been doing something for a considerable length of time. This is very important as will become apparent as your adventure progresses. Try not to let too many hours to pass. So I remember last time we went to the Casino. Oh gosh, right? yeah, we went gambling. And we got we got got tricked. <laughs> Quite badly. It's <laughs> the game where the only way to win is not to play. <laughs> right, shall we dive in? Yeah. So it all started ten years ago when the evil pirate lord Cinnabar murdered your family. At the time you were only 12 years old and lived with your family in the small fishing village of Clam Beach on the northern coast of Ruddlestone, halfway between the two major ports of the kingdom. Harabnab, home to all lawful adventurers and sailors, and the sinister port of crabs. Life in Clam Beach was not easy, but it did have a peaceful security about it. And then the terrible day came. It was a clear summer day and warming, when the huge forbidding black galleon f sailed into the, into the bay. Fly, flying the dreaded flag of the skulls and crossbones, pirates. The bloodthirsty cutthroats are soon racing up to the, the beach towards the village. The fighting was swift and bloody. Soon most of the grown folk of Clan Beach had been killed, your father and two siblings dying while trying to defend the village. In the end, the village elders had no choice but to surrender to the marauding raiders and open the village's meagre treasure coffers. The cruel captain pi pirate the cruel pirate captain came ashore from his ship to collect the booty himself. The sight of him filled you with awe and fear. The pirate was a tall, handsome man with a neatly trimmed pointed black beard and his hair tied back in a ponytail. He was dressed in the clothes of a nobleman with a fine scarlet coat trimmed with a gold braid and wearing a large tricorn hat. At his waist hung a gleaming cutlass and you could not help but noticing that on the back of his right hand was tattooed the image of a grinning black skull. When the raiders had finally gone, filled with the feelings of hatred for those who had murdered your family, you asked Ragai, the village is there, who the ca pirate captain was. That villain is one of the most evil men to have sailed the seven seas of Titan, was his vehement reply. He is one of the most feared pirate lords of our age, a creature without remorse, a murderer, and a follower of bloodthirsty voodoo deaf god queers. Quis Kari, whose mark is the Black Skull. He is Cinnabar, but because of the terrible atrocities he he commits, he is also known as Bloodbones. From that moment you vowed that one day you would have your revenge on the evil Cinnabar. Your mother became ill soon after that dreadful day, and three years later she died. On your 16th birthday you left Clam Beach and made your way to Harabnab, gaining the position of a cabin boy on a ship travelling to the distant continent of Valencia. For the last six years you've sailed across the globe, but you never forgot the promise that you made to yourself a decade ago. Over many voyages you've tried to learn as much as you can about the rogue captain. You discovered that Cinnabar's galleon, the Virago, is frequently seen sailing in the waters around Nancuno Bay, and that he has a hidden base somewhere close to the Port of Crabs. You also gleaned as much information as you could about the notorious city, and so, when you decided that you were at least ready to confront your, at last ready to, to confront your enemy, and the chance of passage on a merchant ship sailing to the port of crabs came up, you leapt at the opportunity. Vengeance, you are sure, will soon be yours. 
The porter crabs is a haven to every pirate, buccaneer and freebooter who ply their trade off the coast of the Kingdom of Ruddlestone in the Old World. As you stand at the prow of the Merchant Man, looking across the land, you can make out the ramshackle jumble of buildings of the infamous city and the outline of the old fort that stands above it like some ancient crumbling sentinel. The Merchant Man bumps against the stone jetty and you quickly disembark. Not only is the Port of Crabs one of the most dangerous cities in the old world, but a thick fog is starting to roll in from the sea. It's late afternoon on a chill day in the month of unlocking, and the docks are bustling with activity. Standing close to the quayside is a large old stone building, which looks like it could withstand a battering from Hydana, god of the deep himself. Hanging over its sturdy oak door is a faded sign to claim that this is the Do Jolly Roger. This seems as good a place as any to, to begin your search for Cinnabar, and so you enter the inn. The spacious bar inside the Jolly Roger is packed with all manner of scurvy looking sailors and other lowlifes. The landlord is as big as an ox and has a large anchor tattooed on one arm. No one takes notice of you as you enter, and so you approach the bar and order a tankard of ale, costing one gold piece. Decide to question the landlord about the Cinnabar first. Over your tankard of ale you talk about the weather and the state of trade, and then draw the innkeeper onto the subject of the pirate you seek. I hear Vigo. What, what is our voice? Is it... <laughs> we sort of green nose, but... Mm. I hear Vigo plows these waters. You say? I'm surprised we weren't attacked ourselves. Uh, not anymore, it doesn't. The landlord replies. Have you not heard? Cinnabar has been dead these last six months. Cinnabar? Dead? You've come all this way after years of harbouring desires for revenge, only to find the Dread Pirate Lord has already passed from this world. You ask the landlord how he died. Have you not heard? I thought that everyone as far as Diamond Islands were no by now. It happened. Last hiding. You listen attentively as the innkeeper relates the tale. It appears that Cinnabar and his crew were emptying the hold of a galley sailing from Harabnab to Arkle Town in distant Analand, when the renowned bounty hunter Conan ca caught them up in the ship the Fortune. Unable to escape, Cinnabar and his men had to defend themselves against the crews of the galley and the Conan. Fierce fighting ensued with Cinnabar, eventually falling at Conan's hand. Having suffered an incredible number of wounds, his body being lost to the sea. With their leader killed, the surviving members of his crew fled aboard the Virago, returning to the port of Crabs. Soon after, Cinnabar's second in command, Merle the Red, set off in the Virago amid terrible storms, pur purportedly to, re to recover her captain's body. Many now believe that the Pirate Lord's galleon sank and has not been seen since. The landlord says, concluding his story. You thank him for his help, and in a bewildered gaze, you make to leave the inn. You console yourself with the thought that at least the murder of your family has at last been brought to justice. As you leave the Jolly Roger, you feel someone pulling your jerkin. Turning round, you discover that an old drunk, slumped at a table by himself, is the one trying to attract your attention. Just because he's dead doesn't mean he's at rest, mutters the drunk. Curious about the drunk's words, you sit down opposite the old man and ask him what he means. Let's just say, you don't know, you, you don't want to go believe in everything you hear. But I know what's going on. Oh yes, old Dregs knows. Cinnabar ain't coming back, he ain't really dead, see? He, he's coming back. The old man says in a harsh whisper. Intrigued, we press Dreg to tell you more. But he suddenly becomes serious and looks around the bar room uneasily. Not here. Meet me outside in ten minutes. You nod in agreement and leave the Jolly Roger. Now turn over. Tendrils of fog are now swirling around the boat, boats in the harbour and oozing along the streets of the town. When the ten minutes are up, you quickly return to the Jolly Roger and sneak down the side alley next to it. In the mist and shadows at the end of the narrow alleyway, you can make out three figures standing over a fourth, cowering on the ground at their feet. Wasting no time, you draw your sword and dash towards them. Hearing your approach, the, pirates, the three pirates turn to face you. The burly characters are ugly, scarred rogues, and the biggest of them, who's wielding a heavy wooden club in one hand and holding a bullwhip in the other, 
Looks as if he's seen, if he has some ogre blood in his lineage. At the pirate's feet lies Dreg, beaten and bruised, only just conscious. Here's the snooper, growls the half rogue. Ogre we'll even. You're no match for us. By the time we finish with you, you'll be feeding the shrimps. Or rather, the shrimps will be feeding on you. The other two pirates burst into a coarse laughter at the companion's joke. <laughs> yeah, you're fish bait. Still laughing, the ruffians advance towards you. Apart from the half-ogre, there's a well-built, bearded man missing most of his teeth, and a leaner rogue with two ugly scars round it on the right-hand side of his face. You may be about to engage in your first fighting fantasy battle. Would you like to know more about how the combat works? Uh, I think, think we know. I think we're good. Oh, we beat Death Trap Dungeon, don't you know? <laughs> How will you deal with the ruffians char stepping menacingly towards you? So we can either charge one of the pirates, stand firm and prepare to fight the rogues, or try and escape by running back along the alleyway. Uh, fortune favours the bolt. Yeah, I think we go for a charge. The pirates are not expecting this reaction from you, and are able to wound, you're able to wound one of the rogues before they know what's going on. It's time to fight! Wait. Off to a nice little start. Yeah, just easing us into it with some drunken pirate fighting. Since this is the the free book that you get, they probably don't want it to be like super like intense as right out the gate. Yeah. Second pirate, more like second rate. <laughs> Second great pie. Hang on. Oh, we're triumphant. The half ogre steps forward to fight you. Yeah, we'll fight him. Yeah. Dropping his whip, the half ogre moves in to attack you with his club. Alright. Okay, so as long as we don't do that. Yep. <laughs> We're that, fine. That's how we get hit. Okay, that's fine. Last of the pirates falls, and with some relief you sheathe your sword. It looks as if the pirates have beaten Drag within an inch of his life and he's failing fast. You do your best to make the old man comfortable, and he opens his eyes. Thanks, stranger. He gasps. But I'm a goner. Now, they're up to something, you know. You ask him who he's talking about. Cinnabar, screw the pirates at the Black Skull. Looking at the hands of Drag's assailants, you see that each bot bears the tattoo of a grinning black skull. No, oh, we've seen them meeting up around the taverns in the city. Silas Gallows, Keyhole Jack, Old Cribbins, even Morlu, the Witch Doctor. They're planning something all right. Rumour says Miral the Red found Cinnabar's body. And he's not rightly dead. But he's not rightly alive either, see? It's that voodoo and black magic they meddle in. Not right, it isn't. I've heard tell that they're planning something big tonight. You think old Snide and the guard would be looking into it, but truth be told, no one's been able to locate their hide out. <coughs> he's coming back. We'll all be doomed. 
Stranger, beware the black skull. Blood Bones is coming back. And then he's gone. Laying the old man down, you ponder his last words and what your next action should be. So Cinnabar is not really dead. In that case, you may, have still, you may still have a chance for revenge. But what did Dreg mean when he said that Cinnabar is not really alive either? Dreg has given you several clues about your enemy and where you should start your search for him. And it seems that time is of the essence if you want to stop the Pirates of the Black Skull. The old man mentioned that the Pirates of the Black Skull were gathering again in the Port of Crabs, so they may have a hidden base somewhere in the city, but of course at present you've no idea where it may be. Before leaving Dreg, he searched the bodies of his assailants for any further clues. You find nothing helpful, but you do discover that one was carrying a bottle of rum. Drinking the rum will restore four stamina points. Um, should we do that now? Yeah, may as well. Although, we could... Hmm... Wait a little we bit might longer. get a chance to like eat some food. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're not in dire need of it. We'll wait for an hour. So there are six options available to us. We can visit some taverns and inns in hopes of finding out more. Um, we can visit the notorious gambling pits, possibly a source of information and a way of increasing your gold pieces. Alternatively, it might be a good idea to better equip yourself by visiting the markets before you set out on your quest. We could try and find out more about the Black Skull and the Cult of Quiskarai. Or, uh, then again, although Governor Montargo has certainly allowed the port to remain a safe haven for buccaneers and freebooters, you may do well to get the help of the authorities against Cinnabar. Or you could take the direct approach, abandon your search for further information and instead look for the pirate's hidden base. That seems like the worst plan. Yeah. I don't like the idea of telling the governor. Yeah, he's in on it. Yeah. I'm sure of it. Um, so um, let's go to the mar- oh, you. I feel like we're going down the exact same path as before. We're like, okay, we want to go to the market, but if we want to go to the market, we want money. If we want money, go to the gambling. We know where the gambling Wasn't it a is. really easy, the gambling pit? So we know to avoid the, the, card shuffling or what is it, uh, cup shuffling game. Yeah. And we know that the great machine or whatever it was called is just like an anagram. Yeah. And you worked it out like almost immediately. I couldn't remember what it was, but I can't remember what it was either. But and... you'll see it, and you'll be like, "Oh, is that?" Yeah. yeah. So maybe just go to the gambling pits first, and we'll do it real quick. Yeah. Make make some easy money. If we want to, we could always pop a bookmark down here now that we've gotten through the introduction. Yeah, that seems like a, a smart thing to do. Um, and that way, if, if things go awfully for us and we end up dying very quickly, we don't have to go through the, um, the whole thing again. Didn't that happen last time? We died very suddenly. I think we did die very suddenly last time, yeah. Okay, okay let's go to the gambling pits. Yep. The gambling pits lie within the area of the city known as the Claws, the poorest and most dangerous part of the port. The pits themselves are housed in a vast stone building with a large iron studded oak door. <laughs> the entrance is flagged by two troll guards. As you walk past them and through the door, they give you a cursory glance and one says roughly, Remember, no fighting. Inside the gambling pits lie, uh, inside the gambling pits lie under a thick cloud of pipeweed smoke and are packed with uns the unsavory and roguish clientele you would expect. Mingling with the crowds, you check out the different games that are on offer. After a brief look around, you discover three that interest you, which will you investigate further. So there's the Arrow of Providence, Calabria's Calculator, and um, the Amazing Armarno, or we can leave. Okay, so the Amazing Armarno will leave him alone because he's just a con artist. Yeah. Uh, the Calculator is the the uh, anagram. We didn't do the. Arrow Did we Providence. do the arrow? I don't. I don't remember doing the arrow. Let, let's do the arrow then. Yeah. Let's... The Arrow of Providence is a popular game of chance in the gambling pits. 
It's made up of a large circular board divided into 12 sections, each painted with a legend. An arrow-like pointer has been attached to the centre of the board so that it can spin. To play the game it will cost two jack gold pieces, but you will be playing for a potential jackpot of 10 gold pieces. If you've got the gold and want to play, then it's 3, 4, 6. Yeah, let's have a go. Okay, so it's just roulette. Mm -hmm. Okay. You pay your two gold oh. pieces and step up to the board. You get three spins of the arrow, and over those three turns you must score a total of ten or more to win the jackpot. jackpot. To spin the arrow, roll one die and add five. This is the number of spaces around the board that the arrow moves. The next spin starts from this space. You may play the game for as many times as you like, as long as you have enough money. But if you win the jackpot, you cannot play again. Wait. This this board is um very weighted against the player. If you need a ten, you only get three rolls. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Lose all your points, lose three points, no score, miss a spin, lose five points, miss a spin. And there's also one point which is pretty much useless. Yeah. Okay, well we're 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 here. Yep. Um right. I guess we have to play at least once. Yeah. We got a two. The arrow rests on one point. You currently scored one point. Great. Now we just need four and five. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. Okay. The arrow rests on two points. Okay, so it's impossible. Great. Yeah. yeah. The arrow rests on four points and you scored seven. And now the game is over. Hooray, I'm so glad we lost two gold for that. Yeah. I don't think that's worth it to try again. I cut your losses. Yeah, I think cut our losses as well. And I, I'm the gambling um, aficionado. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that the PC term for I have a gambling problem? I think so. Yeah. As you leave the game, you catch a whiff of an interesting conversation. You must test your luck to figure out whether you can clearly hear what's being said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As you elbow your way through the bustling crowds, above the hubbub, you hear a gruff voice say in a harsh whisper. The Viago sails for Bone Island at midnight. Looking round, you see two knavish looking characters part company and go their separate ways among the throng. You will not be able to follow them now. The Virago was, was the name of Cinnabar's ship, and what was that about an island? This careless talk could could be an important clue. What will you do? To try around the, the Calabrese's cal, cal, calculator game. Uh, turn to 294, or we can go to the Amazing Armarno, which we're avoiding, or we can leave. Let, let's make our money back at the calculator. Yeah. Okay. Calabrese's calculator is a large mechanical contraption made of countless cogs, levers, and crankshafts. The main feature of the machine, however, is a large panel with five windows in it, behind which are five drums with the numbers embossed on them. Standing next to the calculating device is its operator, a wizardly looking man who you assume is named Calabrius. Step up, step up. Who will accept the challenge of Calabrius's calculator? Only two gold pieces and you could win ten. The man calls out. You imagine that this challenge involves some kind of puzzle generated by the machine. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, definitely won't be a very easy uh, anagram. Ah, a contestant. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. It, it's... Ah, a contestant. Come forward. Don't be shy. Now, where's your money? <laughs> you hand the man your two gold pieces. Calabrius moves to the side of the huge calculating device and pulls a lever. There's a lot of noisy clanking, and the number of drums spin round at great speed. Gradually, one by one, they come to a stop behind their windows. 
the last one revealing itself to be blank, so that the panel looks like this. 1, 9, 25, 57. Oh, right, yeah, it was, it's a number pattern. Yeah. Right. Um, we, we figured this out really quickly last time, didn't we? I think so, but I'm just trying to remember. It's double plus seven. That's it. One times two plus seven is nine. Nine times two plus seven is twenty-five, yeah. Yeah. So it should be... Um, 114 plus 7, so... 121. Yep, 121. Yeah! Ha! We bested a puzzle that we did before. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably meant for a much younger audience. <laughs> And we get luck on top of that. No, let's leave. Yeah. <laughs> let's not, not uh, mess with the con man. Yeah, it's time, time to head. As you emerge from the gambling house, you note that two hours have passed since you entered. Pushing through the bustling hordes of gamblers, you suddenly feel something pushed into your hand. Quickly looking about you, you, see, you think you see an old woman hurrying away, but she's soon lost in the crowds. You've been given a sealed envelope. You wait until you're outside before breaking the wax seal and opening the envelope. Inside are a letter and an iron key. The letter reads as follows. If you are determined to defeat the pirates of the Black Skull, go to room 101 of the Silent Donkey. A friend. You presume that the key must be the one to the room in the inn. To follow up on this contact now, turn to 101, or we can ignore the letter. I think we follow up on it. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if it will give us the option to follow up on it later. Yeah, that's my concern. And, um... We don't have any other clues to follow on at the moment, so... No. The Silent Donkey is situated in a, on a dingy back street within the claws. Several suspicious characters watch you enter the inn, but none try to stop you. Creeping up the creaky wooden staircase, you come to the first room on the first floor, room 101. The key turns in the lock, and opening the door, you step into a room furnished with only a table and chair. But what you see there sends an icy chill down your spine. On the table rests a human skull, painted black and decorated with a headdress of brightly coloured bird's feathers. The black skull, this is a bad omen. There's nobody here, so this must have been all been set up by Cinemar's cronies to delay you. The skull fills you with foreboding, but it still intrigues you. If you want to take it with you, turn to 244. If not, turn to 55. I mean, why not? What yeah. if it was set up by a good voodoo doctor? Yeah. Although I, I don't think that's that doesn't seem like the, the setting that they're going with, but... Yeah, but we'll try it anyway. Let's take it with us. Picking up the skull, you are suddenly filled with an almost overpowering sense of fear and paranoia. You have suffered a terrible curse and lose two luck points and one skill point. Involuntarily, you drop the skull, smashing it on the floor. Oh well. Well, you've wasted enough time here already, so you prepare to leave the silent donkey. Test your luck. Alright. What? What? <laughs> Okay. Okay. With your fingers round the handle of the door, you freeze, hearing a floorboard creak outside the room. Is there somebody there? Somebody up to no good? S silently, you unsheath your sword, just in case, and open the door. Do not step through it. Instantly, two black-robed figures leap into the doorway, cautious raised. Determined to stop you succeeding in your quest, the devotees of, Qu of Quesquerai attack. In the narrow doorway, you can fight these acolytes of evil one at a time, and it's time to fight. Oh boy. Okay. Oh gee.
managed to defeat the first one. So they got some old lady to find us in the gambling place. Palm off a, a note to meet at this place to set up a, a voodoo curse. Yeah. If they knew who we are, they could have just like sent an assassin, right? I know. Like, instead of an old lady with a note, just uh, an assassin with a knife. We definitely would have. Uh... <laughs> yeah. A rapid search of fanatics' bodies reveals nothing of value to you, so you quickly leave the inn. As you leave, you ponder how these men knew who you are. You're obviously drawing attention to yourself, which could be a problem. One hour passes. I, it does beg the question, like, the people that knew who we were after, the the, the barman, the the dead drunk, the, the three pirates that we now killed, and that was it. Yeah. So... I think the barman's in on it. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. Choosing a location you haven't already visited, where do you want to go now in your search for information? Three hours have passed since your search began. So we've got the taverns and inns of the city, the markets, the temple quarter, the governor, or um, we can start looking for the pirate secret base. Uh, markets? I think the markets, yeah. Money now, so we could buy some information. The port's sprawling markets lie within the Merchant Quarter, which runs from Farthing Street to Moneylender Street. You have two possible options. If you want to look for practical equipment around the market, turn to 351, or you could visit the Port of Crab's lively bazaar with its more exotic and expensive wares. I mean... Expensive, exotic... It does have a ring to it. Yeah, it could be fun. Give me my knowledge. Oh, maybe I don't. There we go. So we've <laughs> got... You know we've got till midnight. Mm-hmm. Um... And we know that we're being followed and drawing attention to ourselves. I wonder what the map looks like on this book, because it's like all... So we've got the inn, scarred rogues, the half-ogre, and then the gambling pits, which we've always gone to first. <laughs> um, taverns and inns, which I guess we've been to before. I guess. Um... Oh, we must. That must have been where we died last time. Yeah. Then there was the silent donkey, the devotees, um, and they were up at the markets. Okay, markets. Yeah. Should we look at the exotic stalls then? Yeah. You're enticed towards the bazaar by its colourful stalls, as well as the sounds and smells of far off countries. You ignore the rolls of silk and the baskets of spices, but are attracted to a brightly coloured stall covered in a variety of unusual items. Talking with the vendor, you discover that the man is a talismonger, a trader in artefacts that are allegedly mar magical. However, by the look of some of the objects, you do wonder if they are really charged with esoteric power. The magical items the talismonger has on offer are listed below with their prices. You may buy as many of them, of them as, you, as you want, as long as you have enough gold. Oh. So there's an ivory lion charm, a shark's teeth bracelet, a magical compass, a potion of giant strength, a lock of elven's hair, and a carved dark wood armband. It, it, it's not the hair of an elf, it's just the hair of someone called Elven. Somebody called Elven, yeah. <laughs> it's, that, it's like one of those Chinese knockoff. 
Uh, I feel like the magical compass is probably. Mm, it's got magic in the name. Yeah, and at the very least, having a compass would be good. Mhm. Mm um. I'm curious okay. about the armband, but I feel like it might be a trap one. Like it like pinches your arm so you can't use it properly or something. I think we should get two things. Mm -hmm. Compass and something else. Yeah, we should each choose a thing. I choose the compass. I think the shark shark teeth bracelet. Yeah, it was calling to me too. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. The, 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 the most piratey ones. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's get the magical compass first then. The lodestone inside the compass is attracted to large deposits of gold, a must for any would be treasure hunter. Oh. Hmm. If they tell us what they do, that, that makes it entirely different. Yeah. Shall we hit and all just browsing and check the others? Yeah, let's, let's go have a look at what everything else does. I thought it was just like a random, this yeah. is what this is. Do you want it? <laughs> so the ivory lion charm is carved from a single piece of ivory. It resembles the head of a noble lion, gives protection from the dark powers of voodoo. It's a bit late for Oh, that. I think, I, well, oh, I guess it is a bit late for that, but then again, one, of the, one of them is a voodoo witch doctor. That's true. I would love to go into a voodoo witch doctor fight and just be like, hey, you're just a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> shark teeth bracelet is made from le leather embedded with 38 razor sharp teeth of a shark. You feel like it could be useful. <laughs> I love how the others are like, this is a magical item. It does this magical thing. I'm like, ah, oh. this one's like, it could be useful. <laughs> it's just some sharks in a, in a bit of leather, mate. <laughs> Um, the... I think I think you can tell what a potion giant strength does. Yeah, when drunk, it has the effect of adding two to your attract strength for the next battle you have to fight. Just just when oh right no when you drink the potion not when <laughs> drunk <laughs> when you get drunk the potion kicks in. I don't know rum is a <laughs> rum is a resource in this one. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> This lock of hair will bring you good fortune. It's plus one to lock rolls. Okay. Wait, no. Mm -hmm. you, you have to roll below your luck. Why would you want plus one? Oh, because it makes your luck a higher score. <laughs> right. Uh, it's not adding plus one to your dice. That would just be cruel. <laughs> Unless it is and it's a secret trap. <laughs> like a double bluff. <laughs> Look, I told you it would give you plus one, and it just didn't listen. Yeah. <laughs> Carved to look like a snake with its tail in its mouth, putting it on does not make you feel any different. Well, the snake with the tail in its mouth is like the infinity... Yeah. I don't know, I... That makes me want it now. I know, right? I'm like, you say it's not important, but I feel like it is. <laughs> well, definitely the lion charm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think so. So I feel like... Yeah, because if, if, we, if we don't get it, we, we'll come across the situation where we're like, oh man, if we just bought that. Yeah, it's not that expensive as well. How much gold have we got again? Oh, well, we that. started with 16, we spent one on a drink, we lost two we to 21. a wheel, and gained eight from the calculator. Yeah, so we've got 21 pieces to play with. Wait, that doesn't add up. 16 minus 1 is 15, minus 4 is 11, plus 10 is 21. Yeah, that's right. That is right. Okay. 
thing is, I don't know how much gold we're gonna need for later. Yeah. I think, yeah, still two things is a good amount. Yeah. But maybe... Lion Charm, Shark Teeth, Darkwood Armband? Yeah, that's what I'm leaning towards. The things that we don't know what they do. I like how we've been like, ah, there's these things that, that potentially do something, and then there's these three red herrings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're like, yes, we'll have all three of those, please. Yes, yeah, so we're going to make a nice red herring stew. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what we go for. We've got the gold for it. <laughs> like, the potion and the hair are like... Okay, you tell us straight up what they do. I think we can get along without them. Yeah. The compass, I'm like, hmm, maybe, but maybe not. Yeah. He could just take us back to the gambling hall. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we happy? Mm hmm. If you're worried about voodoo. Oh, it, that's speaking, sorry. If you're worried about voodoo, you should go see Madame Galbo, says the talismonger, and tells you how to find our cottage in Mandrake's Lane. If in the future you're given a chance to visit Madame Galbo, you may do so. Do you wish to look around for more practical equipment around the markets, or should we continue on our quest? Um, hmm. We got, what, five, five gold. gold left? Ah, nah, let's just carry on, I guess. Yeah. I feel like we just get pickpocketed if we go to the normal market. That's fair. As you leave the markets, you note that one hour has passed, and as you're walking along Trader Street, you cannot help but notice a roguish figure standing on the corner of Lobster Alley. The man is gone and scrawny, in his later years, and with several days' growth of stubble. He also has an eye patch, a wooden stump for a leg beneath his right knee, and wears a long coat and tricorn hat. A monkey, with its own tiny waistcoat, is scamping around the man's shoulders. As you walk past the pirate, you make eye contact, and he beckons, you, beckons to you with a glance before turning and hobbling up the alley. Do you want to follow him? I feel like it's a really bad idea. Yeah. Should, should we just not? <laughs> yeah, but also I'm like, but, but where is he taking us? He's got but a monkey. monkey. He's got a monkey. I knew <laughs> monkey would be your, your down. <laughs> Sure, let's... Hang on, this is just Captain Barbosa. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, you have to follow me now. I've got... I can try Barbosa voice. Yeah. It's not going to be good, though. Despite having a wooden leg, the old rogue moves quite quickly and disappears around a corner before you can catch up with him. As you're about to round the corner yourself, you suddenly start having misgivings about your latest course of action. Will you continue to follow the pirate? Or turn back the way you just come. <laughs> when the DM says, "Are you sure?" Yeah, and you're like, "Well, I've already started." Yeah, let's let's follow. You turn the corner to find the old man standing in front of you. So nice of you to join us. <laughs> As they say, old Crivens always gets his man. It's a sudden swishing sound, and you receive a sharp blow to the back of your head. Instantly, you lose consciousness. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh. You come to, tied to a stone altar before a bony likeness of the Voodoo Death God, Quaskarai. You only just have time to take in the fact that you are in a large underground chamber, packed with pirates and devotees, before a black-robed priest plunges the sacrificial knife into your heart. Your very blood shall be used to help bring your enemy back to life. <sighs> <laughs> Takes notes. <laughs> Monkey Don't. evil's bad. Well, Man who is clearly evil is evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Judge book by cover. <laughs> oh, I think because it's twenty five past, and we're planning on stopping at half past. We should end here. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as I'd love to go and and give it another go. Um, well, this is a, this is our our. We've finished a, a book early book. Yeah, blood bones. So I think next time. Off February. Yeah. Uh, we'll pick up a new book. Mm-hmm. Should we have a we look now and yeah. get people to vote on one next time? So, what are our options for books? Uh, we've got The Citadel of Chaos, The House of Hell, Creature of Havoc, The Forest of Doom, The Temple of Terror, Trial of Champions, and The City of Thieves. Now, Child of Champions is the sequel to Death Trap Dungeon, so I think we should avoid that one. Mm-hmm. At least for the, the next book. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Wait, should we pick one each and then we'll put it to a, a vote for people to choose? That sounds like a good plan. Um, I think my vote is the Citadel of Chaos. Okay. Now, I deeply uh, disliked it as a a teenager, but I'm going to say House of Hell. It's a completely different vibe. It's uh, modern day. Ooh. So uh, I'll put a vote up in the community Facebook page and then people can tell us what they want. Yeah. Um, I hope everyone's had fun today. Um, and welcome to the new people. Um, feel free to drop us a follow. Um, we stream these uh, Fight and Fantasy books on the third Wednesday of the month. The uh, third Tuesday of the month, even. I don't know what yep, day of the yep. week is. Um, And thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye. See you soon. Bye.